Welcome back to Stellar Stories, where we discuss science, philosophy, and the mysteries of the universe. Ever wondered how many possible combinations of cards there are in a deck? It's obviously big. How many years do you think it would take to shuffle them all? The answer may surprise you. Allow me to explain with a thought experiment. It starts with a simple deck of playing cards. Obviously, they seem harmless enough. 52 thin slices of laminated cardboard with colourful designs printed on their sides. Yet, as another illustration of the mantra, the complexity begins from the most simple systems. The number of variations that these 52 cards can produce is virtually endless. The richness of most playing card games owes itself to this fact. The number of possible permutations of 52 cards is 52 factorial, which is expressed mathematically simply as 52 followed by an exclamation mark. I think the exclamation mark was chosen as the symbol for the factorial operator to highlight the fact that this function produces surprisingly large numbers in a very short time. If you have an old school pocket calculator, the kind that maxes out at 99,999,999 and attempt to calculate the factorial of any number greater than 11 results, only in the none too helpful value of error. So if 12 factorial will break a typical calculator. How large is 52 factorial? 52 factorial is the number of different ways you can arrange a single deck of cards. You can visualize this by constructing a randomly generated shuffle of the deck. Start with all the cards in one pile. Randomly select one of the 52 cards to be in position one. Next, randomly select one of the remaining 51 cards for position 2, then one of the remaining 50 for position 3, and so on. Hence, the total number of ways you could arrange the cards is 52 times, 51 times, 50 times, 49, etc., all the way to 1. Here's what that number looks like. This number is beyond astronomically large. I say beyond astronomically large because most numbers that we already consider to be astronomically large are mere infinitesimal fractions of this number. So, just how large is it? Let's try to wrap our puny human brains around the magnitude of this number with a fun little theoretical exercise. Start a timer that will count down the number of seconds from 52 factorial to zero. We're going to see how much fun we can have before the timer counts down all the way. Start by picking your favorite spot on the equator. You're going to walk around the world along the equator, but take a very leisurely pace of one step every billion years. The equatorial circumference of the Earth is 40 million 75,017 meters. Make sure to pack a deck of playing cards so you can get in a few trillion hands of solitaire between steps. After you complete your round the world trip, remove one drop of water from the Pacific Ocean. Now do the same thing again. Walk around the world at one billion years per step, removing one drop of water from the Pacific Ocean each time you circle the globe. The Pacific Ocean contains 707.6 million cubic kilometers of water. Continue until the ocean is empty. When it is, take one sheet of paper and place it flat on the ground. Now, fill the ocean back up and start the entire process all over again, adding a sheet of paper to the stack each time you've emptied the ocean. Do this until the stack of paper reaches from the earth to the sun. Take a glance at the timer. 
you will see that the three leftmost digits haven't even changed. You still have 8.063 times 10 to the 67th power more seconds to go. One astronomical unit, the distance from the Earth to the Sun, is defined as 149,597,800 kilometers. So, take the stack of papers down and do it all over again, 1,000 times more. Unfortunately, that still won't do it. There are still more than 5.385 times 10 to the 67th power seconds remaining. You're just about a third of the way done. To pass the remaining time, start shuffling your deck of cards. Every billion years, deal yourself a five card poker hand. Each time you get a royal flush, buy yourself a lottery ticket. A royal flush occurs in one out of every 649,740 hands. If that ticket wins the jackpot, throw a grain of sand into the Grand Canyon. Keep going. And when you've filled up the canyon with sand, remove one ounce of rock from Mount Everest. Now, empty the canyon and start all over again. When you've leveled Mount Everest, look at the timer. You still have 5.364 times 10 to the 67th power seconds remaining. Mount Everest weighs about 357 trillion pounds. You have uh, barely made a dent. If you were to repeat this 255 times, you would still be looking at 3.024 times 10 to the 64th power seconds. The timer would finally reach zero sometime during your 256th attempt. And there you have it, the mind-boggling vastness of 52 factorial. It's a number so large that it defies comprehension, yet it all starts with a simple deck of cards. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the infinite. See you next time.